Example 4. Right now, to a cyclist traveling on a bearing of 30 degrees at a speed of 20 km per hour, the wind appears to be blowing at the speed of this and at the direction of this. Now, this is when you have to read very, very carefully. The wind appears to be blowing. Do you think the wind is really blowing from this direction? Okay, now the word appears means that it's relative to the cyclist, isn't it? So, this is another type of question whereby, you know, it depends a lot on uh, the drawing again. Okay, the vector diagram, of course. So, uh, first of all, alright, like I always advise people to do is to uh, go always go figure out what um, the ve vector of your cyclist is and what the vector of your wind, or whatever vector that you know of. Okay, so the first line here tells us there's a cyclist, there's this cyclist that's traveling at a bearing of 30 degrees, so therefore on a bearing of 30 degrees, okay, we know that, aha, okay, so this is the vector, please don't confuse the north with the vector, ah. okay, so this is the vector, okay, so we shall denote this as VC because we're talking about cyclist, a 20 kilometers per hour. Okay, good. So this is something that we know from the question. The wind appears to be blowing at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour from... Okay, again, the keyword from... Okay, the keyword appears... Okay, from a direction of 135. Now, 135 bearing is not difficult, isn't it? Okay, so let's just go figure out where it's 135. 135 looks a little like this. Okay, so this is the bearing of 135 degrees. Alright, now, from a direction of 135, okay, from this direction means that the wind is blowing towards this direction. Okay, this is a very common mistake that I've seen a lot, a lot of people making. Alright, from the direction of 135 doesn't mean that you are blowing the wind is blowing in a direction of 135. Okay, this is this is uh, this happens when they tell you that the wind is blowing in a direction. Okay, in a direction. So you have to really um, be careful. Okay, when you read the question. All right. So in a direction or from a direction is very very important here because the moment your arrow hit, okay, the arrow is drawn wrongly, facing the wrong way, wrong direction. Everything is going to be wrong. Okay, your vector diagram is going to be wrong, your answer is going to be wrong, everything else is going to be wrong. Okay, so again, please don't confuse the north with the vector. Alright, so this is the vector we're talking about. Now, what is this vector now? This vector, is it, is it our VW? Do you think it's the VW? Right? Now, if you say no, then you're right. Oh, okay. So, because why? Right, this is not the actual wind isn't it okay the wind is not actually tra uh, traveling i'm sorry uh, the wind is not actually blowing from this direction this wind that's blowing from this direction is is the apparent one okay meaning it's, it's according to the cyclist all right so the cyclists see this wind so i mean the cyclists can't see the wind i'm sorry but i mean the cyclist feels that the wind is blowing from this direction so this is the velocity of the wind relative to the cyclist Okay, so it's VWC. Alright, so this is the velocity of the wind relative to cyclists. Very, very important. Again, if the moment you, uh, even if you get the um, letters in the opposite way, okay, instead of VWC, you, you, you write down VCW, everything is going to be wrong as well. Okay, so as you can see, there's many, many possible pit holes here. So please make sure you read the question very, very carefully. And then, um, you know, like I said, this is a good exercise. Write down what you know about VC and write down what you know about uh, VWC. Okay. The next thing is, of course, what we're supposed to find, right? We're supposed to find the true wind speed. So the true wind speed, of course, refers to what? VW, isn't it? Okay. So of course, then we must then think. Um. Okay. So I have this. I have that. But how am I going to get this? So the key lies in the vector diagram. Okay, very much lies in the vector diagram because we have to form a triangle before we can solve or anything else, right? So we have to make use of the formula that we've seen since our lesson one. Okay, since we talk about uh, parallel vectors, we have seen this formula. So VWC is equal to VW minus VC. Okay, this formula shouldn't be anything new to you at this point. I hope. Alright, so now think about it. Well, you have VWC, right? 
you have VC right so this is what you're after right okay so shift your VC over and you will see that VWC plus VC is equal to VW okay now why do we need to do that well to help us construct the triangle how okay now bear in mind that uh, this chap this section of relative velocity is actually under vectors so it is very much a vector type of question here okay so in vectors we learn two main principles or two main laws right the addition law and of course the subtraction law uh, recently I mean the past few examples we have been seeing the subtraction law in action okay so now for a change we are seeing the addition law alright so vector VWC we know VC we also know so um, VWC, let's just draw VWC, sorry I hope I can draw a straighter line than that, okay, good so this is our VWC right, VWC plus VC oops, this again not very nice ah, okay this is our VC, so VWC plus VC will give us VW Okay, so this is how we construct the vector diagram given the kind of information that we are given. Okay, so you have to be very clear. This is unlike lesson two, whereby you know the sniper logic. Okay, when we talk about you know you're traveling here, you and therefore wind is blowing there, you have to aim here. No, no, no longer that kind. Okay, so we have to be extremely careful about what we know. All right, and uh, what yeah we have to rely a lot on. Uh, sometimes this formula to help us get the uh, vector diagram out correctly okay the next step here of course is to fill in the blanks isn't it so what do we know okay well we do know a few things for sure we know that this angle here is 30 degrees okay so let me just write 30 degrees over here la. all right so uh, we also know that this angle here is 135 which will mean that this angle here inside the triangle is 105 degrees okay and of course that leaves us with this angle outside here as 45 degrees isn't it alright so um, what are we looking for oh hold on, hold on. We, we also know that the speed is 20 kilometers per hour okay and the speed here is uh, the wind appears to be traveling at 15 kilometers per hour okay Again, I think I've drawn the triangle a little bit too small. Okay, so pardon me, I beg your pardon, but uh, I think we can still continue using this. Okay, what are we looking for? We're looking for the true speed, isn't it? So this is the true wind. Okay, and therefore the true speed will simply let it be x kilometers per hour. So studying the diagram, okay, the triangle, we know this angle inside as um, 105 degrees we know that this side here is 20 kilometers per hour this is 15 kilometers per hour oh, well no problem finding x in again our cosine rule okay so x square is equal to 20 square all right 20 square plus 15 square minus away 2 times 20 times 15 cosine 105 degrees and from your calculator okay x will be equal to let me see 27.93 okay it's 3 kilometers per hour all right so this will be our true wind speed next of course the f direction from which the wind is blowing so let's think from which the wind is blowing now the wind is blowing from in this direction in this direction therefore it will be from you know somewhere here okay ultimately what we're really looking for well we have to look for the bearing isn't it so let us draw a north oops this doesn't look quite like a north okay let's draw a north all right i'm sorry for the ugly drawing but it's really quite difficult to draw using this tablet okay so we have to find a bearing, isn't it? So, because in order to find the direction from which the wind is blowing, so this is supposed to be a straight line, let's just okay, extend it. So, what we are really interested in is this angle. Okay? But, you know, 
Let's think about it. Okay, how are we going to get this angle? It's not going to be easy. Alright, first of all, there isn't a lot of things that we can make use of here. Okay, but ho uh, however, there are a few things that we can make use of in so far as we already know. Okay, we know that this angle here is 45 degrees. Okay, you're using another color so we can differentiate the at different angles that we will be dealing with. And uh, therefore, this angle here will also be 45 degrees, isn't it? Well, because why? This is north and this is north, this is alternate angle. Okay, so now what do we have? Now, if I can find this green color angle, okay, which is inside the triangle, and I do know that this red color angle is 45 degrees, I should be able to find this little angle here, isn't it? Okay, so how do we find the green color angle? Alright, studying the triangle again, we know that, uh -huh, hold on, I know that this is 20, I'm uh, looking for this angle, okay, and uh, I know that this is X, and I'm looking for, I, I do know the opposite angle, right? So, using a sine rule, okay, X, we already found X, so it's 27.93 over sine 105 degrees is equal to 20 over sine alpha, we shall call the green angle alpha. Okay, so that will make things a lot easier for us to write. Alright, so from your sine rule, okay, you get the result of 43.76 degrees. Okay, now I also want to spend a bit of time talking about the case of ambiguity again. Okay, in this case, because we're using sine rule and uh, there exists a very um, possibility that you know, this could be an acute uh, or an obtuse angle, isn't it? So, but uh, bear in mind, inside a triangle, there can only be one obtuse angle. And you already know that this angle here is 105. So therefore, this angle here has to be acute. It cannot be obtuse at all. So that will eliminate the probability, or I mean, the case for the ambiguity. Okay? So... And this will also help us to uh, construct triangle correctly as well. Because some of you may ask, okay, some of you along the way, you know, or maybe later on as you start to do questions on your own, you may start to ask, you realize, you know, how do I know that this vector must be slanted to the left and not, you know, maybe to the right? Okay, again, how do you know, right? So, um, you won't know. That's the problem. You won't know. You have to really make a guess. Okay, so uh, you you draw, okay, either triangle. Let's say let's say, okay, you were to draw it wrongly, and and you you drew it this way instead. Okay, so you see you you, you didn't know right, so you, you thought that well it could be this, and anyway this vector is twenty, it has to be slightly longer than fifteen, so well it makes sense. Okay, now the problem is, when you are looking for your angle alpha, which in the end, you have to look for it because you will be looking for the bearing of the wind, isn't it? So, when you're looking for the angle alpha, you end up with two answers. One of which is still going to be um, 43.76 uh, because we're going to still using we're going to still be using the same numbers. So we're going to get this answer and an acute uh, and op and another obtuse angle. So common sense tells us that well, okay, in this triangle, this is already the obtuse angle, and therefore we're it can't be the obtuse angle, so we don't even bother to look for what it is. So therefore, this angle here, okay, this bigger one, has to be 43. Then you think about it. Can this angle really be 43? No way, isn't it? Well, think about it. This red angle here is 45. Therefore, this red angle here has to be 45. So how can this angle be 43? Okay? So, you see, how things works all in the end. Okay, to help you uh, confirm that your diagram is drawn correctly. Okay, because if you have drawn the diagram wrongly, okay, you will still get the x as this answer. No problem at all, because the numbers are still the same. Alright, so you see, you use the same numbers, you can plug in the same numbers, you get the same answers, even though your diagram is wrong. Okay, but the moment you find your bearing, 
everything is going to fall out into places and you're going to see, hey, you know, ah, okay, I got it wrong here, I got it right here. So which is why it's actually very important to master how to draw the diagram correctly because a lot of times, in fact, I've seen a lot of cases whereby people get the right answer but get the wrong bearing, okay, and the diagram is totally haywire and they have no idea what went wrong. So they thought that they were half correct, okay? So so uh, they were correct usually it's because of luck. Alright, because you're using the same numbers anyway, so you'll get the same numbers as answer no matter what as well. Okay, so I hope this clear things up a lot, uh, you know, about the case of ambiguity. Okay, so anyway, we are still not done yet, huh? we're still only at alpha, so this alpha angle is uh, our green color angle, isn't it? Okay, so how does it help us to find this, this blue color angle that we're after? Oops, I'm sorry, I used the wrong color. Okay, it should be blue color angle. Okay, so this is the angle that we're interested in. So how does it help us? Until now, we still have, you know, sort of uh, quite far from it, isn't it? Well, let's take a look. If we know that this alpha green color angle is 43.76, therefore, to find this little angle here, Okay, let me use another color. I'm sorry for all this colorful thing. Okay, we shall color this black. Alright. So, this little black angle here will of course be given by 45 minus 43.76 degrees. And of course, you will get the answer of 1.24. 1.24 degrees. Okay, so therefore we actually know the bearing that the wind is blowing in okay the direction that the wind is blowing in so the bearing of the wind okay the bearing of the wind will be equivalent to will be equal to 360 degrees minus of 1.24 degrees isn't it okay of which you will get one um sorry 358 point is that 8 degrees okay so this is actually the bearing that the wind is blowing in but again the question did not ask us to find the, bear the, the bearing that the wind is blowing at right asking us to find the direction from which the wind is blowing so ultimately we're still looking for this angle here okay so as some of you may al already notice so the required angle Okay, the required angle, the gr the blue color angle, of course, is actually quite easy, isn't it? I mean, this is just simply 180 degrees minus of 1.24 degrees, of which will give us the answer of 178.76 degrees. Okay, so um, well, actually, there's no need to do this step at all okay there's no need to find a bearing at all but I mean in case the question changes to another form you know we have to find a bearing and this is how we do it okay to find a bearing or to find the direction from which the wind is blowing at okay blowing from I mean I'm sorry okay so uh, for this example we have learned a couple of things that uh, we have not seen before alright uh, and that will be the extensive use of this formula okay changing it into an addition law and then to help us draw the vector diagram after which uh, we also talk about how the case of ambiguity affect our diagram okay how do we confirm how do we double check okay using uh, you know the kind of uh, angles that we are given and all these things okay 